What's up guys, Naz here. Thanks for tuning in for this hamstring focused workout. And hamstrings are a super important muscle group to train. Not that all muscle groups aren't important, but hamstrings are super important because they're typically neglected and weak. And that can cause some muscle imbalances and cause lower back pain. And also it's going to make sure that you're not living up to your athletic or genetic potential in the weight room. So strengthening your hamstrings and glutes is pivotal. Um, because a lot of times if we're sitting down a lot, then they're gonna be weak. Or even if you're just training and you're not really putting much focus on them because we like to focus on the chest and shoulders and abs and you know the muscles we can see, even the quads. But the hamstrings and glutes are gonna put everything into perspective and help everything work together. And if you're competing, if you're doing any kind of competition, a lot of shows are one from the back. So the not just your lats and your upper back, but your glutes and your hamstrings. That's going to complete your physique. Now, from an athletic standpoint, it's gonna help you run faster, jump higher. From an injury prevention standpoint, it will help if you train your hamstrings and glutes correctly, it will help prevent that lower back pain. So a lot of important reasons to train the glutes and hamstrings correctly. Now, I'm doing a dynamic warm-up here, and I'll go into a little bit more detail on dynamic warm-ups in a future video. So I started with a little bit of foam rolling, and I'm just doing some dynamic stretching here. I'll do a couple of activation exercises, so I'm not gonna go super into detail on exactly what I'm doing for the warm-up, but you can kind of see the structure here. And then I'm gonna dive right into the workout here in a second. So as usual, my first exercise is going to be an isolation or activation exercise. So I'm just doing a lying leg curl. You can do any variation of a leg curl. Sometimes I'll do single leg curls. Sometimes I'll do double. Sometimes I'll do seated leg curls. Now, if you don't have a leg curl machine, you can use a Swiss ball, TRX bands, or sliders to do body weight variations of this. So there's a lot of different techniques you can use. And I'm just staying high reps in this because we're focused on muscle activation here. So just high reps, lower on the weight and just getting a good squeeze of the top. So it's okay if your hips rock back and forth just a little bit there, but we want to get as close to full extension as possible and then full contraction and try and keep in a good spinal position here. Right, first compound movement of the day is an RDL, or Romanian deadlift. So this is a phenomenal hamstring exercise. You can go really heavy on these, but you wanna make sure you get the movement down. Now, this is a movement that your lower back can really take over. So we wanna prioritize spinal positioning. So you can see as I'm coming down, I'm really focusing on my hip hinge, and I'm trying to make sure my entire spine moves as one unit. That includes all the way up to the head. So you can see my head is flat. I'm not looking up the mirror like you'll see a lot of times, and I'm sure you'll catch yourself doing that occasionally. It happens to me too. It's just a natural thing. We want to look up and kind of see what's going around, going on. But when we're doing a deadlift. We want to keep the entire spine moving as one unit to optimize the, um, the effect and also keep our spine as safe as possible, which is always important. But we should always feel this primarily in the hamstrings. Yes, your lower back will be working too. But if you're feeling it, mostly lower back and barely any hamstrings, that's a problem. So we're focusing on the stretch here and you can see nice flat back and butt is back. Weight's back on the heels there. Knees aren't coming forward. Even as the weight starts to climb, I try to maintain that integrity. Use a belt if you feel like it helps you. I like using a belt as the weight goes up on these, mostly to uh, maintain my core integrity because as the weight gets heavier, I'm not able to focus on my core as much and I really use the weight more for that than lower back. But um, if it feels better for you, use it. If it doesn't, don't use it, but do make sure that you're absolutely maintaining a straight back and keeping your core tucked in and tight. That's super important. And throwing in some leg press. Now this leg press specifically, we want our feet a little wider and a little higher so we can focus 
on the hamstrings a little bit more than the quads. Your quads are still going to work, obviously. But you've had a couple days to rest them, so that's okay. We want to, this is still a leg day, even though we're focusing primarily on the hamstrings. So we want some of those compound movements in as well that are going to work both muscles. We just want to make sure that the, major, the hamstrings are doing the majority of the work. So it's okay if the quads do a little bit too. We're not going to do only isolation exercises for the hamstrings. It's going to be a lot more effective to throw in some compound lifts. So leg press is a great one. We can throw some weight on there. We can focus on the tension a little bit um, without really having to worry about the back or anything else. You can just focus on the muscle that's working. So try and get as deep as possible. Again, nice and wide with the knees and higher with the feet. Trying to get like a student a good stretch and then a good squeeze at the top. I'm in the zone and you know that I'm ready for the shows. How it goes, I don't know. But I'm waiting till I'm chose run home. Here I go. All these people wanna know what you think of And it wouldn't just wouldn't be a leg day without lunges. So we're hitting some walking lunges here with a barbell. You can use a barbell, and if you aren't strong enough to use a barbell yet, you know, you can use an easy curl bar, or you can even use plates or dumbbells in the hands. Although it does change the movement slightly if the weight's on your shoulders versus hanging. Now, especially for glutes and hamstrings, I like the bar on the back, and a little bit of a bigger step than if I was trying to focus on the quads. So stepping just slightly wider, it's gonna activate the glutes a little bit more. You're just getting a little bit more hip flexion and a little less knee flexion than the closer step, which will in turn get those glutes and hamstrings working a little bit more. And if you go heavy on these, like this isn't super heavy, but if you go heavy, heavy, you will feel your glutes instantly get sore. All oh, right, so this machine is a GHD or Glute M developer. If you're not familiar with it, it's a great one again to get that hip flexion similar to our RDL, but put in a little bit of a different position here. So in this one, it's okay to get a little bit of spinal flexion because we're not really loading the spine. I mean, you can use a little bit of weight, but right here we're just using body weight, so it's a little bit more on the higher reps. And what we want to do is you can have a couple different positions here. You could do your legs completely straight like I'm doing here, or you can get a slight bend in the knees and do more of a hamstring curl variation. But for today, I want to focus a little bit more on the glute here. So I'm just focusing on the hip extension and you will feel your hamstrings as well. So I'm just doing roughly 15 to 20 reps there. And that leads us to our hip abduction or otherwise known as the good girl, bad girl machine. You can imagine why it's called that. Now, this is a great way just to hit the side of the butt or the side of the glute and get a little bit more definition there. There's a lot of different ways you can do this, but if you do have access to this machine, it's a great way because you can use progressive resistance and you can really make sure you feel every rep. So it's a good way to isolate that muscle. It's a little bit hard to hit in other ways or quite the same. So if you have access to this, give it a shot and let me know what you think. Just make sure you don't make eye contact with anyone in the gym while you're doing it. All right, just finishing off three sets to failure of standing calf raises. Again, just making sure to get a good squeeze at the top. Now it's super setting with this with the abduction and you don't want to leave calves an afterthought if they're a weak area for you, but for me they're not, so I just save them for the end of the workout. care of my body because I do love training and I want to be doing this a lot longer so you got to take care of yourself first and foremost lifting heavy is fun and it's great if you do it safely but you got to listen to your body too and just pack it on the weight like for instance with those walking lunges I typically can do quite a bit with those but it wouldn't do any good um, just going through joint pain so if you're experiencing joint pain know the difference and learn when to just set the ego aside do what you need to do substitute if you need to and let your body recover figure out how to recover and rehab and seek some professional guidance if you need to hey uh, again don't forget to subscribe to the channel and 
I will see you guys in the next video.